Hi, I'm Michelle Vaccarello, Senior Digital Ed Editor of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing and PharmaQBD.com, and today we are in Cork, Ireland at EHA Soft with Dan Gallagher, who is the founder and CEO. Thank you so much, Dan, Thank for Thank you very much. Um, now, EHA Soft is one of the largest consulting and software companies here in Ireland for environmental right. health and safety Correct. standards. Yeah. What do you offer for the pharmaceutical industry? Um, historically, we, we started in business in 1992, so our disciplines would cover occupational health, industrial hygiene, then we do training consulting. And in 2002, then, we set up a software division. Uh, we recognized that most of the people at the time were using paper to manage things like risk mm -hmm. assessment, accident reporting, occupational health. So we've developed software tools over the years uh, to basically get people to move away from using paper to using uh, more efficient, more effective methods. And the product we developed is called My MAI, stands to measure, analyze, and improve. So it's a full suite of products. It is basically, uh, I suppose, specifically helping companies who, who want to implement a management system, be it for occupational health and safety or environmental management. And it's modular in nature, so you can take one part, like the auditing part, the risk assessment, the occupational health, or you can take it all in one go. But at a very, very fundamental level, it's designed to help you get certified to standards such as ISO 14000, and OSAS 18,000. These are the recommended or rec recognized international standards for health, safety, and environmental management. Okay. So that, that, that's what we do. Um, mm -hmm. And what trends have you seen in the industry in terms of environmental health and safety management? I think if, the, the, the biggest, I suppose, if you, if you look at our website and the information we get and the requests from clients would be more effective ways for uh, doing accident report investigation. That, For some reason, that, that's the main one that comes up. We have, uh, obviously, very good systems for making accident reporting and investigation a much simpler task, but very, very comprehensive. But what we keep saying to clients is that accident report investigation is, is what happens after the event, and really proper, more effective risk management looks at what are the things that can go wrong. And we have very, very, I suppose, defined and simple processes to help people to identify occupational health risk, health and safety risk, and then environmental risk. Mm -hmm. So we say if you can identify these to begin with, then afterwards we, we, you, you have more effective systems to make sure the accidents don't happen, your incidents, and therefore less reliant. So for, for us, th the trend is more effective tools. That's what we see for doing accident report investigation. But we, we're trying to get people to recognize that, that, is react that that's after the event. Uh, the, the biggest thing uh, as well that we see is most people are still using paper mm -hmm. today. So to get people to move away from paper, it, it's, it's still a challenge. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Even when we go into companies and they say they're using software tools, there are things like Word and Access and different mm -hmm. or some bespoke development tools. We come from uh, the practitioner side. We know what tools are, are effective. We always learn with our clients, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. but we, 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 we know what tools are required and we keep these tools up to date. And basically, if, if, if people can see that by using effective tools, they can save time and money. And in the global economic crisis, that mm -hmm. you know that, that that of itself is is hugely hugely important too. We have developed and evolved our product to work offline. So now you have where a situation some of our clients where they can go off, do risk assessments. We've tablet PCs; they can do all of their assessments, come back, cradle the PC, and the work is done. Mm -hmm. One medical device client has said that they anticipate that they, they've cut the time from doing risk assessments from four hours down to 45 minutes. Oh, so wow. huge time savings as mm -hmm. well there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, now, can you elaborate a little bit on the My application? I know you are using modeling and simulation, 3D mm -hmm. risk mapping, that sure. type of thing. We do, uh, at a, at a, again, uh, at a very, very fundamental level, we do uh, help people identify health and safety hazards. Mm -hmm. We help them identify environmental hazards. We then go through, we help them prioritize these hazards and we make sure they have the controls in place. And we have a very, very defined process for helping people to identify controls because risk management is about, it's multidisciplinary. You need input from engineering, you need input sometimes from HR. Mm -hmm. It's not just EHS. So the My Tools fundamentally are about managing risk. Allied to that then is once you know what your risk uh, risk levels are, you need systems to, I suppose, to manage that. So we have tools for doing auditing, tools for doing non-conformance corrective action reporting. We have tools for emergency response. The risk assessment is, is the fundamental tool to help companies identify what are the potential fires, spill, mm -hmm. and explosions. 
And we can take that to another level as well. We do 3D risk management, uh, 3D risk modeling and simulations inside there. And that, that, that for us, again, is just an extra way, particularly if you're dealing with fire services coming on site. Fire services in the heat at the moment, CAD drawings aren't always the most effective. And we can take risk management information and make sure that they have the most up-to-date stuff in a format that they can understand quite easily as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so the feedback has been very good. No, no, ab absolutely. absolutely. Um, do you think the industry is doing everything they should be doing in terms of environmental health? And uh, um, I, I think it's always a challenge. We, you know, particularly again in, in the past twelve months with the with the global crisis, mm -hmm. people are losing resources in house. Right. They're not getting budgets released to them. So I, I think for people to be aware that there are more effective ways of managing risk. In our own surveys that we do uh, with, with, within the marketplace, you can see that most people say, they say that they feel they're not doing enough risk assessment, mm -hmm. be it for environmental health or safety. They, they say that they, they think the quality of their reports is good, but it could be better. Yeah. But 100% of the respondents will tell you that the key factors for them are data protection and security of the data and mm -hmm. traceability, which is a paradox because if you're on paper, you, you, right. you don't get that. That, 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 that level of satisfaction. And I think that, again, tools like the My Tool, when, when you do risk assessments, they can be very simple or they can be very complicated. It depends if you're bringing in industrial hygiene, chemical risk, machinery risk, explosion, fire hazards. And My, what we try to do is make sure that the simple risk assessments are catered for just as easily as the more complicated ones. At a very, very fundamental level, we say to environmental health and safety personnel, the processes we give you are good and they're up to a standard that's recognized internationally. So we can help you with compliance. But most people, their challenge is communicating all of the information, the results that they've done through their risk assessment back to the management team that they share, that they, mm -hmm. that they share the workplace with. And I think that's the challenge for, for most people. It's, it's to make EHS data into something that senior management elsewhere in the organization can manage. Managers manage by numbers. Right. So if you can go and say, well, this is the story in your department, and please help us reduce the risk by X percentage, and here's how to do it, then you're going to see risk reduction. Right, and, and that's how you're reporting what this is. Exactly. It's, it's, it's structured in there. We, we've fundamentally, our, our three, why we call the product MAI, it stands to measure, analyze, and improve. We measure, we quantify how many hazards and risks there are. We analyze at any one point in time what level of activity is going on in terms of risk reduction. And we can show month on month across the whole corporate structure within one department if they're making an improvement in risk reduction. There are many other reports, but for us, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Senior managers, of course, they're interested in reducing risk, but the technical details sometimes can remain in the environmental health safety department. Senior management just need to know fundamentally what, what's going wrong. Mm -hmm. And the, the landscape is changing. It, it, it is uh, certainly in Europe in, in the past uh, two and a half years, it's not just directors anymore. It's now directors and senior managers mm -hmm. are in the firing range and the fines are enormous. So a senior manager can be prosecuted for, for uh, not doing his job properly as a result of somebody getting injured and they can go to jail. Mm -hmm. So we, in essence, I suppose, we try to keep your employees at a hospital and your, managers out, <laughs> and your managers out of jail. That's what we try to do, so. Exactly. So, um, so can you tell us about um, the training programs that come along with the software? And, you know, I know you have picture and video within your reporting. Sure, we, we use it, we, again, we try to make it, it it's continual, uh, work in progress for us is always to make mm -hmm. it as, as intuitive as possible. We recognize that some people in some departments won't be using this every day, so you want to make sure it's easy. But we want to make sure that people can get in, see the reports as quick as possible, and get, get something meaningful out. Because mm -hmm. I, I just want to log on and see, look, what do I have to do? And just make sure I address that. And just keep, because I, I have many other tasks that I've performed today. Mm -hmm. So the reports are, uh, the, the, we, 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 there are many, many different levels inside there, but they can run off their PDF reports. They, we, can, we, we can use any, any format people want. But the most common ones for us are PDF reports that can be emailed around the organization and stuff like that. But there, there are many different ways we can do it. We, as, as regards what the client wants, typically the, the suite of reports that Mai has uh, addresses what the client wants, but we can build in extra reporting functionality for them. We, 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 we do not want a product that the client, who is an infrequent user, cannot remember how to use it. Mm -hmm. or cannot get out the information that they require after they've done all the work putting the data in. It's that in our interest. And our fundamental premise in my is that we will do, we'll enhance the reports, generally at no cost to the client, if it, if it enhances my. 
we avoid product customizations. We want one product that's good for everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll try to do it. If we won't charge unless, of course, somebody says, you know, we need it tomorrow. That's right. the only time we go in. But generally, if it's good for my, we do it. And, okay. and we, we've plenty of very positive feedback over the years. That helps us to continue and improve the product as well. So your software is very easily integrated into It can do. I mean, the, the typical systems we'd have to link into would be HR-related systems and, mm -hmm. and then even systems like SAP. People solved. It really doesn't matter where people already have lots of personal details inside there. They have details of emails and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to ask them to re-enter re all that. We can integrate out. Uh, we can, we can, if needs be, link into content management systems. Our preferred system there is SharePoint. But it doesn't matter. It, but it, just to give you a carte blanche answer, can you link into everything? Uh, you can't say that because there's myriad systems out there. But generally, it's not a problem. We're web-based technology, and we have ways of getting the data. And your um Working with working to uh, maintain all international um, compliance and guidelines. Correct, then. correct. And when when you start off at the international level, and say the compliance for for these international standards is here. Generally, when it comes down to local level, you're you're, you're exceeding that. But when 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 you take uh, a client in different states that might have different regulations that apply to them, the idea of my is that it's extremely customizable by the client. Okay, so we don't want a product that we give a customer, uh, be it in Australia or the United States, or a big, big area for us at the moment, excuse me, is the Middle East. We don't want it where they have to do a huge amount of work to use it. We say, okay, while the process of doing, for example, an accident is defined, within that process you can configure it yourself. The process of doing an audit is defined, because mm -hmm. there, there are internationally recognized methods of doing that. Within it, you can configure it yourself. So that, that's how that's how we can export from from our base here in Ireland to to the Middle East to the United States. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate you. Thank you very the much time. for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chair.